Today, we're going back. We're taking it all the way back to Kim of Queens. Kim of Queens. She's back. Is yeah. back. Y'all, wait. And, back. I, and I got a soundboard full of. My daddy always used to say, the bigger the butt cheeks, the sweeter the meat. <laughs> <laughs> I got these for days. I got these for days, Kim. Did you have a favorite mom? Do you actually hate clogging? What was your favorite episode? If right now you got a phone call and it said, we want to make another season of Kim of Queens, would you do it? Ooh. This is the Kim Bivell Show. Let's just go on and spill the tea. This is one of the realest persons I've ever met. My mission is to encourage every single woman. We're here to lift y'all up. There's no one more effective than moms. You mess with the bull, you gonna get the horns. I need coffee, I need Jesus, and I need therapy. <laughs> If you can bring a smile to people's faces, why would you not? True confidence is knowing who you are and why you're here. Hey, y'all. Kim Gravel here, and this is The Kim Gravel Show. And uh, every week, or whenever you listen, y'all, we're just wanting to encourage you and help you level up your life, and we're going to do it together. When I say level up life, I mean go to a bigger, higher, larger, more successful place in your life, happier, joyful, all the things we're all looking for. Um, hopefully, you can find a piece of that here on The Kim Gravel Show. Today, it's, it's really, you know, people say you can never go back, Zach. Have you ever heard that? Say so you can never go back. You can, right? Or it's like, you can't go home again. Right. That's another one. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. You know, you can, you know, don't look back. It's in the rear view. Don't, you know, all of that. Uh, you can go back. You can go back. And today we're going back. We're taking it all the way back to Kim of Queens. Y'all, my first uh, national TV debut and launch was on uh, Lifetime Network. Um with the show Kim of Queens. It was a reality show that was. Um, where we we mentored and helped young girls, um, you know, compete in pageants, but more importantly, become these young women, these leaders, these, these empowered, confident young women. And we did it for two seasons. And Zach. Kim, that's where we met. She's back. It's back. That's where we met. Kim of Queens. She's back. Is yeah. back. Y'all, wait. It's and, back. I, and I got a soundboard full of. I love it. <laughs> 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 Play another one. Right, so say, so go. You gotta go. Kim of Queens is back. Kim of Queens is back. That's huge. <laughs> That's huge. <laughs> so let me just tell you, Kim of Queens is airing today, season one. It drops on QVC Plus today, the full season. Now I want to tell you, behind the scenes, um, we're calling it behind the Queens. Yeah, we are. Uh-huh. That was that was that was Zach Snazzy little title. It's going to be with my sister and my mom, and we're going to just talk, spill the tea on what the really was like taping this show and how wonderful it was. Uh, but today, Zach, aren't we doing something special? We are around so, the launch. So wait, wait, we have to tell them the behind the Queens content is all like part of what's going season oh, one going on QVC Plus. So if you want to see that extra content. Head on over to QVC Plus. It's out today. Yes. All of season one drops today. today. And stay to the end of those episodes. Watch Kim. I was there. I flew out to record Kim and her family yeah. doing this. And we had a blast. When we did that, and Mom and I and Allison were back in the saddle, oh you know, looking at the camera, talking. I remembered, you know what? I love Kim McQueen Smith. You know, you really can't go back. You can watch it, but you really can't. Because I was thinking, oh, my Lord, if I had to take that with them two again. Woo! Well, Kim, I just want to say... I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Double homicide? <laughs> Stop it. That was brilliant. I mean, Zach, maybe we can't go back. Kim, maybe we can't go back. Speaking of brilliant... My daddy always used to say, the bigger the butt cheeks, the sweeter the meat. <laughs> <laughs> I got these for days. I got these for days, Kim. Do, it, do another oh one. Do another right, one. Right, do another right, one. Right, right, just call me Butter, baby, because I'm on a roll. Oh my god, I got these all day long. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> oh, I had so, I had so well, much fun. Well, it clearly shows my my southern passion. That's for sure. This show. We reached out to my social media and asked all of you to just 
give us any questions that you have. I mean, nothing's off the table, right, <laughs> yeah, Zach? Yeah, nothing's off the table. We nothing. Kim posted. She asked for questions from Kim of Queens fans, and boy, did they deliver! Like, we got hundreds Ooh. of questions, Kim. Like, oh, when wow. I told you before we started recording this, I have questions for days. Like, this could be a six-part episode where you're just <laughs> answering questions. Um, a lot, All honestly, right. though, a lot of the stuff that like the really deeper questions is covered when you all go behind the Queens in those episodes. So if, oh, I love if it. I love you it. are a Kim McQueen's fan, seriously, go watch, go watch the new episodes. There's new content there. It's so much fun. You want to hear something so funny today. today. I'm going to pull it up right okay. now today. Angie oh my God. from Kim of Queens yeah. texted me. Hey there, it's Angie. Oh, there's going to be something there. Oh yeah. Oh, fact, let me bet. text her well, right now. Well, she probably saw, cause gonna... you also posted on social media about Kim of Queens coming back. So we record this a couple weeks early. Kim of Queens comes back today, but we're recording this like a week earlier. But she um, said, hey there, it's Angie. I said, what's up, girl? I miss you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's actually one of the questions. Let's get into the questions because. But y'all, I look like I got a good deal at Liberace's yard sale. <laughs> Can I just tell you, I want y'all to, none of those sound bites were written. All of that was out of my mouth and head into the microphone. And can I just tell you, I did not know that I talked in sound bites with smart butt comments all the time. I did not even know. Kim is going to do it Kim's way. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What more? I mean, it was my show. It was my uh, pony and I wrote it. Okay. It don't matter if you've got a perfect body or a perfect face, and you've got your lips all glossed up. If something smart ain't coming through them, you can hang it up. <laughs> that was it. That was it. <laughs> that can I say something? That's my life philosophy. That is my new tagline for my life. <laughs> all right, here we go. You can look gorgeous. You have the perfect body, and you gloss your lips up. If ain't something smart coming out of it, you forget it. Hang it up. Oh my gosh. All right. So speaking of something smart, let's get into right. these questions because we okay. did get a lot of really smart questions. Um, so okay. Good. The most asked question that we've already kind of addressed is, is the show coming back? Um, but then uh, folks also want to know, are you still coaching? And does Pageant okay. Play still exist? Okay. Um, yes, I'm still coaching. I coach a handful of girls that I um, feel led and inspired to coach. In fact, I just, two years ago, I had a first run up to Miss Georgia. I had a, I had a girl go into Miss Georgia this year, and now she's aged out, but now she's coaching girls, so she's passing on the Pageant Place philosophy. Pageant Place, Allison ran Pageant Place for, for like five or six years, and she's still coaching too. Um, again, just... A handful. We basically just coach interview. We will help with wardrobe or whatever with girls we feel like have potential. Allison ran five uh, five years uh, pageant place for five years after the show ended, wow. um, but pageant place is no longer it's no longer LSC. It's no longer a business, right? You know, yeah. um, because we have have moved on to QVC with our brands, but we're always seeing the potential and always pouring into young girls um, that we feel passionate and feel led to help. That's awesome. I just want to give a hat trick to uh, Twirler Babe 18, who wrote this question in the best possible way, who said, I would simply explode with excitement to know if the show is coming back. So thank you for that. Um, <laughs> well, you know what? You know what, Zach? The show is not coming back, per se, with new seasons. But how, how fantastic has it st stood the test of time? that so many young girls that that were babies when the show was out are now rediscovering the show thanks to streaming. And yeah. also that even QVC and QVC Plus have decided to re-air Kim of Queens. And I think it's a testament to the message, which has been truly my heart and my passion my whole entire life is to see girls rise to the biggest and best selves. Now, you know, now it's through QVC and in our clothing line and our beauty line and, and of course this podcast, but you know, it just goes to prove my point about a calling in life. It can look different in different seasons of your life, but the calling never changes. That's huge. It's huge. You're just really lucky I didn't use this one. Can you take the bus to Shuddy Town and let me get my point of view across? <laughs> Who did I say that to on the show? I think you said that to Angie. I think that was okay. An Angie. Angie, now, now speaking of Angie, she just texted me back. She goes, oh. I heard KOQ is coming to QVC. Loud, L-A-W-D, I miss y'all. Oh, 
So wait, so that's another question that we got a lot, which is like, are you still in contact with the girls, with the moms? Spill the tea on that a little bit. Like, who do you still talk to? Is it anybody? Yes, I I am. It's not an everyday, but I mean, Allison just had coffee with Deb last Friday. I mean, Deb and Hannah, we stay in contact with. Uh, um, Raven, I stay in contact with her on social. Addison, I still stay in contact with her on social. You know, we all don't live in the same community, so we don't get together uh, physically. But I'm always keeping an eye out on the girls and what they've got going on and how they're growing as, as young women. Ansley, and 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 I, I talk to Ansley and her mother every now and then, and we keep in touch with social media. So the answer to that is yes, they'll always be my girls, and and I'll always love them. And mm-hmm. and when you do reality TV, um, Mom and I were the two main ones that we all of us grew from the experience. Okay, yeah. hands down. But Mom and I probably were the most. Um, God, how can I say this without like being too real? No, we get were probably real. the most. Let's get real. This is Kim. This level, is a safe. Level. This is a safe space. We were very, we were very secure in our personal lives, professional lives. So, you know, when you go into something like reality TV, you see how people go nuts, nuts. Okay, I mean, hello, that's what reality TV is all about. But I think. You know, I had been Miss Georgia. I had been on a national platform. I had experienced how TV and all that, you know, really is. Because it's really not, it's just a job. Right. Okay. So it's not this thing where you're just this amazing person and everything is glamorous. And it's not. It's just a gig. It's a job. It's a It's a thing to to do where you earn your paycheck. Okay. Um, and... I'm so thankful for Kim of Queens and for Lifetime and Rob Sharon and all the people at Lifetime who really saw the potential in this show and in this message. Um, but really, it was a stepping stone. And I think a lot of people for that were in the show, they grew a lot because they realized a lot of things about themselves and about um, what they could or couldn't do. You're saying it's a job, and I think what you're, I mean— you know, I'm not going to try to put words in your mouth, but like, it's hard work. Like it is. Y- no, we put were, words in my mouth. It's, uh, oh my God, Zach. We were just talking oh. about it. Like you had young kids and like, tell me about, let's uh. talk about the hours. Talk about the hours of shooting Kimmo Queens for a second because I was there. hour days, was, 20 hour days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, y- y- doing what I'm doing right now with the camera, I would sit for eight hours and answer questions and go, Call me biscuit, baby, butter, baby, because I'm on a roll. I mean, I would just sit there and I would be exhausted. I'd be like, if I have to say, y'all, one more time, I'm going to die. Well, and you need, you know, and, it's, it just, and it's a performance, it's energy. But it's not even that. It's like you want, when you're in the, it's reality TV is like a bubble. So it's like its own echo, what is it called? Echo sphere, Echo chamber. Echo chamber, yeah. one of them. I knew it was echo something. <laughs> um, it's like, so you don't live in the real world. I mean, you're not going home watching your TV and cooking dinner and, you know, yeah. doing homework. You're, you're, can you believe Angie did that? You know, you're, you're, it's passion and passion and passion. And I would always have to be, bring myself be like, all right, girl, don't get upset because they called you, you know, to be word. Just bring it on back home. And I always had to try to be mature and take the high road, yep. you know, and because I didn't want the show to turn into something that it was not intended to be, which we wanted to do Kim of Queens um, to really encourage girls because I was doing that personally every day. You know, yeah. um, people say, was Pageant Place a business? It wasn't the fact we had to pay taxes, but it was a passion project. It was a ministry for me. Mm-hmm. It was not something I gouged people to make a bunch of money at. It was, I really wanted to pay it forward in the way that it was done to me by uh, Nancy Williams, who was my pageant trainer, my mother, um, you know, all the people, women that had been in my life that had made me successful in my pageantry. And in my performance, I wanted to do that for, for young girls. So, and sometimes I would charge, I'd have to charge because if you don't charge people, they don't take they it don't seriously. It. Yeah. They don't value it. They don't value it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. It's funny when I, I know like from working on it and, and from meeting you, you know, my first impression, I, I will tell you right now, like my first impression, I was like. Oh, we're doing another pageant show. I don't know what this is going to be like, you know, are we going to be like exploiting people? And, you know, that's sort of, I think that, I think that especially reality TV around pageants has a bad rap. And I think, you know, certain other shows like kind of created that. Yeah. And 
I would always tell people like when I would talk about the show, like, no, no, this show is different. Like Kim is different. Kim and her family are really, are really lifting these girls up and really like, it's about creating that, that confidence. It's about going out there and being who you are. And that was the message throughout. And it was so positive. And I think that actually is, is what made it work. And then also maybe what made it hard to like continue forever. Well, and I will tell you, it, 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 it was hard behind the scenes too, because the medium of television is so weird. Yeah. It's so weird in the fact that it's not real. Okay. Yeah. Like what we consider celebrity or television, all that, y'all, it's just regular old people. Right. Just like you and me. Yep. I mean, I'm just a regular old person. Right. I mean, I'm just a person that struggles with my kids, with my husband, with paying bills. It was just like everybody else. <laughs> you know, we all have the same problems. We all have the same struggles. I, uh, with insecurity. I'm insecure all the time. Uh, would you Would you make another season? Like, if if right now you got a phone call and it said, we want to make another season of Kill Queens, would you do it? I'd have to pray about that one, Zach. Okay. I, I would tell you, it would have to be it would have to be working with people like you and Sarah, Ibadi, all of my people that yeah. that are like minded. I, I, I don't at this point in my life and at this um, stature of my life and where I am in the season, I have to work with like minded people who want the same thing out of a project. And if I could give anybody a piece of advice right now, I would say surround yourself with people who have the same motive. Mm. That was the hardest thing for me was people who didn't have the same outcome and motive in mind. Okay. Yeah. So, so to answer your question, would I consider it? I'd have to pray about it. And then it would have to be um, staffed and surrounded by people who wanted the same thing, which is to create, you know, a great show with excellence, but also to make an impactful difference. Yeah. I was warned about your mom. They were like, okay, so yeah. like, listen, like Kim's great and like, you know, Al Allison's great, like, but you kind of have to like, watch out for, for Miss Jo. <laughs> watch out for her mom because she's kind of a lot and she's like, she kind of scared the last production play. manager. Yeah, she don't play. Oh my gosh, it was so play. funny. Like, yeah, and, and that's true. Like, so to say this, the kids didn't work. Mom didn't work that much. Allison, you know how she barely works anyway. She skates in and out. I mean, half it was the scene, she's here. laying on the floor. She's breaking her legs. She's doing all sorts of crazy she stuff. She was, <laughs> when she passed out in one of the scenes, I think it was one of the final scenes of season two, she was drunkard and Cooter Brown the night before. And she passed out because uh. she had a hangover and, she, and there was no air in the building. And she was like, I just need to go upstairs and get in my room. And she passed out. So they'd be like, oh, Allison. Uh-huh. She did it on purpose, Zach. Uh, She's made for reality TV. Kim, I think we should, <laughs> let's do a commercial. We'll come right back. <laughs> yeah, y'all, I need a break. We'll be right back. It's fall, y'all. It's back to school. And look, we've got sports going on, fall fashion. I don't know about you, but I'm busier in a one arm paper hanger. And the good thing is that I have Factor to fall back on. When I'm saying Factor, I mean it's America's number one ready-to-eat meal kits. I cannot tell you how convenient, how easy, when I am too busy to cook, which is about three or four nights a week, but I want to make eating healthy a priority. I grab my factor meals, I pop them in, I heat them up, I am good to go. No groceries, no shopping, no chopping, no prepping, no cleaning. I still get like flavor and fresh, great, good for you meals um, that are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is pop it in, heat it up and eat it. And the family loves it. I mean, when you've got two boys, 14 year old and 16 year old teenagers and they can eat them by the dozens, you know you got something good. Factors fresh, never frozen meals. They're always ready to serve, prepared by chefs. Um, so when you've got those busy days and you don't know what to, to serve the family or eat for yourself, try Factor. Head on over to factormeals.com slash Kim50 and use the code Kim50 to get 50% off. That's Kim50, 50 at factormeals.com slash Kim50 to get 50% off. Y'all, they're delicious, they're easy, you're gonna love it. Try it. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, do you ever find that 
You're just trying to fall asleep and your brain suddenly won't stop talking. Oh, that's so I struggle with that. And do your thoughts start racing right before you go to bed or these crazy inopportune moments? One great way to make those like racing thoughts go away is to talk through them. And you know, I love to talk y'all and therapy gives you a place to do that. So if you can't get out of those negative thought cycles and you find that you struggle sometimes with mental and emotional peace, it's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries and, and just how to talk through your problems, you know, because it, it empowers you to be the best version of yourself. And you know, that's where we are, that we want you to be the best you you can be. And it's just not for those who've experienced major trauma. It's just sometimes it's everyday living that we get caught up in. So if you're thinking about starting therapy or if you've ever thought about it, I wanna say to you, give BetterHelp a try. Okay, it's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. And I don't know about you, but you know, I gotta learn how to make time for myself. So try it. Visit betterhelp.com slash Gravel today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Gravel. And talk it out, y'all, and find the help that you've been looking for. All right, we are breaking it down. Did I tell you Kim of Queens season one, okay, is coming on QVC Plus today. And behind the Queens is the extra content you get with each episode. So head over to QVC Plus, y'all, and check it out. So many great episodes. You know what, Zach, as I was like re-watching a little bit when we were taping behind the Queens, yeah. I was just like, oh my God. I, I mean, the memories, the the... Just everything about it. T can I say this? I'm so glad I can sit here today and and be and be proud of the work that we did on that show. I know. I was. I I rewatched yeah. all of it um, to produce because I produced the Kim of Queens. Bless Kim it. Of, uh, Bless the it. And um, I I loved it. I I was great. It was like this is a really good show that I really stand behind, yeah. and I and I love making it. I do too. It, I really think that it it really will bless a whole group of new people that see it now that it's well, coming and, back. And don't you think, like, it was needed then, mm -hmm. Zach. I think the message was definitely needed then, but now more so than ever. Ooh, I yeah. think we're at a place where it really, I think it was a little ahead of its time is what I'm trying to say. Oh. Just a little bit. All right. Well, yeah. let me, let's get back into questions because we were just, we were just talking okay. about Allison and all her shenanigans. Um, and uh, Lord. Bella Gallopim. Uh, asked this question on Instagram. She said, did Allison really have bad taste or was it just for the comical aspect of the show? Love you both. Alice, Allison has horrible taste to this day still. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me say this, Bella. Taste is subjective, right? Okay. It is. I'm going to just, what, some, some one man's trash is another man's treasure. I'm not judging that, okay? Oh. Um, but when it comes to like, who would you want to pick out your car color, your wallpaper, your paint color, your shoes to go with your outfit, your earrings, um, you know, your hair? It's not her. It's not her. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's good. And I will tell you that it has been a family. And, and, and she says her taste is wonderful. And the delusion that she has in that, I, I admire. I appreciate it. Honestly. I wish I had that kind of delusional belief. <laughs> In myself. In the first episode of the, of the whole series, episode one, the pilot, you send her out to go get like a camo dress. And it is hilarious what she comes back with. She's like, Allison and mom are just, I'm afraid to even say this, but I, and I don't mean this in the sense, I'm just trying to put you in perspective. They're like dumb and dumber. Yeah. You know that movie yeah. where it's just like yeah. two ding dongs <laughs> make a great team. It's that's them. They're the ding dong girls. But I feel like, <laughs> here's the thing. Can I? And you know what? No, no, no. I want to say this too. And I'm going to defend this because I'm going to get some bad emails, which I don't care because y'all don't know. I know. But Amy and all my family agree with me. Like, I'm not a lone wolf here. <laughs> but your mom has tremendous taste. Like, your mom is on. Yes, but she, her and Allison, believe it or not, like, they are very similar. 
That's shocking. Like actually. I just got off the phone. With, uh, they're very similar. <laughs> they're very similar. They they are they love life. They I mean I'm the tortured soul. It's not them. But they love life. They love they love people. They love having fun. You know, my mom just looks better doing it. But I'm just saying that they're like, so for me. I'm always serious. It's about business and winning, and we got to prevent. And zin, zin, zin. You know. Yeah. They're not like that. So when you put them together, it's just one big fun ball of mess. And you know I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, oh, God, I love you. Oh, these, these sound effects. Okay. You know what? I'm a little afraid for, for, for this to drop today on QVC Plus, Kim McQueen. I'm thinking, oh, God. I don't know. There's something on it. Can we, you know what I mean? Can, There's something going. Can I, I just want to say, I just okay. wanna, yeah, you're going to be forced to do another season because the mob is coming for oh. you. Okay, wait, Kim, seriously. I, I want to say this too, like as producing this behind the queen stuff, I was yeah. actually going into it a little bit worried because it's like, it's, <laughs> it's been 10 years, but no, let me say this because I think Rightfully this is actually, so. Rightfully this so. is kind of amazing because like you and your mom and your sister were all there. You're, you're talking behind the scenes stuff, yeah. but in the show, like you're kind of mean to each other. Not And, and here's the thing. It's all from such a place of love. Like you're having so much fun with it. But mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. as an outsider, I was like, okay, are they going to watch this episode? Because you're watching, you know, episodes and reacting to it and watching along with, you know, with it. And mm -hmm. are they going to mm -hmm. watch this and be like, start fighting again? <laughs> like what's going to happen? But, but you can't. You can't deny truth, Zach. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I'm sitting there being mean for mean's sake. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, like... You're not mean. You're blunt, maybe. Maybe that's the word. Well, I, I mean, I'm sure there's a little mean. I mean, but it's family, and that's what families do. And I, they get... They just slice and dice, and then you get over it or you don't. I mean, but... And I always say, get over it, because this is all you got, y'all. I mean, family is all you got. And this might not be the family you were born with, but it might be the family you chose. And that's good, too. But I'm just saying, like, the the... I, I say this to the girls I've trained. I say this to my children. Uh, and I was taught this by my mom and dad. An offensive spirit, someone who gets mad and offended about everything, that is going to cost you relationships. And I'm not trying to get on this preach and teach moment. Let's but I'm it. just saying, Let's like, we had to do that as a family. Like, yeah. I mean— well, it was good we TV. Had to decide. You have to do that. It's well, or it's it's not going to work. But it came natural. What I'm saying is that was not something we just put on, you know, on TV. I mean, that is who we are as people, and I think that's what people related to. Because like my even my husband and my mother are so blunt and honest with each other. Yeah, and and they're so close because of it. So you know, it's worked for our family. Um, it does. There's a lot of love. That's why the 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 criticism and and the 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 little backbiting and fighting is is. I'm not saying it's always okay because it's not, but um, it doesn't hurt as bad in the long term because we all know we have each other's back and we love each other. I do know that I have big hair. I have big boobs and a big back. I have a big mouth. And I say a lot of country cliches. It's true. I just said to like, I'm going to pepper these in as I we had go. One, I had one agent talk to me, one Hollywood agent, and he said to me, is there any way that you can not talk in Southern, Southern colloquialisms? <laughs> And you were like, no. Sir. And I thought to me, I, I was offended. Of course, here's that little offended spirit. And then I thought, you know, no, I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> but can I say, I just, just to back to your mean, family, like, really, like, we got maybe five minutes into the day of filming these. And oh I knew immediately that it was just going to be like fun. It was just going to be fun because. No one was yeah. offended. No one was worried about it. Everyone was laughing. And it was oh so much God. fun. And, and that's the way you all are mm -hmm. in real life. That's and, what you and got and to be in like, Don't take that. yourself. Yeah. Yes. Don't take yourself so seriously. Yeah. Oh, Lord. My mom's got pink eye in both eyes because my mother goes <laughs> and basically like hugs every kid at the church. She teaches the choir at the church. She has yeah, she a puppet does. ministry. Y'all need to listen to me. This is no lie. Why they didn't put this on camera, I don't know. But she has these little puppets and they do their little puppet show. She does a puppet and, show. Uh, herself. Can we? Herself. Can we film that like immediately? Can we just stop? Stop recording right now. Just go to wherever she is and just get her to do a puppet show for us right now. And I'm talking about these puppets are high dollar puppets. Okay, this ain't no sock puppet you make at the house. Okay, these puppets cost two and three hundred dollars a pop, oh and she's God. got so many of them. And y'all, 
when I tell you this is true stuff here, like she'll call me. And, and so, so anyway, long story short, she just called me and she goes, well, I had the puppet ministry Sunday at church and I guess I just hugged them two little kids. I've got total pink eye and a cold. I'm like, mom, these kids are going to kill you. You're 76. You know, she just hugs on them and loves on them and doing her little puppets. <laughs> oh my gosh. And honestly, that's what she loves. <laughs> My mom loves working with young kids and teaching them and, and encouraging them. That's she's all she's ever done. So, of course, the show was a natural progression of how we were raised. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's— But, I mean, I will tell you a true story. She was to Bowl Springs Baptist Church. She's been there forever. She's like, she's like, she's older than the disciples. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, she is Miss Deacon of America. And so, everybody looks to my mom for leadership. But— uh that she, my Allison said, Carl, we got to stop mom from working with these kids. This is just a little sidebar. I said, what do you mean? She goes, we were at church. And mom goes, listen, Emily, shut up and sit down. God loves you and so do I, but shut up and sit down. <laughs> that's how she talks to the kids at church. That's your mom. I mean, that to a T. Like, I don't that's know. That's my mom. That's it. That's and it. they all love her. All the kids are like, oh, this is Joe. I love you. It's Joe. Which is, which. Shut like, up, Emily. Sit I'm down. terrified by her, but like, I also love yeah. her. So. <laughs> And, and she's 76 and she's never going to change and we no. don't want her to. And we don't want her to. Yeah. Um, Zach, she told you to shut up. Yeah. She told you to shut up. In the, okay. All the time. I mean, like many times. And I just, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I shut up. What Wait. you going to do? Okay. So this one, here's another one. This one is from Mary Kendall Chap uh, from Instagram. Uh, she wrote, okay. talk to us about all things wardrobe from Kim of Queens. Were your outfits your own? Because this was pre bell right? Or was it supplied yep. by a company or the pageant industry or the producers? Um, and what about like the pageant contestants? Tell us all about their wardrobes. Um, our wardrobe was our personal wardrobe, just stuff out of our closets. I tried to dress a little over the top. Um, <laughs> yeah. I love, believe it or not, I love over the top. So I'm mean, like, no, not you, Kim. I do. I love to dress larger than life. Um, and so, so, you know, I use my own wardrobe. So did Allison, so did mom. The girls did too, except for pageant. They used some of their own pageant dresses too, but we also had a boutique here in town called Girly Girl. She's yeah. in Beaufort, Georgia. And she would help the girls and, and let them loan dresses and stuff because we were competing every single week in a pageant. A so lot. we worked so many, yeah, it was a lot. And and believe it or not, it's like, you know, it's like athletes. They they need time off and they need time to, you know, it's it's the same kind of thing. And these girls were, boy, were they were they troopers or what? These girls really, really not only are beautiful, but smart, but yeah. Just their endurance and everything. So, um, this girly girl boutique. I suggest anybody in town check them out. They're so they're still there. Such variety, they're still there. and they were they're still there. That's awesome. They're still th and they've grown. They've girl. grown. They've gotten even bigger. They were awesome. Yeah, yeah they were really and, um, great to work with too. Yeah, they were. They were. They were. Um, okay, okay. This is a good one because um, I'm building off of this like just how how it was pretty hard. Um, uh, Lulu Wands wrote. How do you go on air when you're feeling down or tired? How do you push through? And I think so much of what we've just been talking about is like pushing through. That's a great question. Yeah, that is a um, great question. Because I go on air every week almost exhausted and tired. <laughs> so, you know, can I tell you, you know that saying, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life? Yeah. When... I would dread getting to set at Kim of Queens. And sometimes I dread like doing my shows here, but when I'm in it, when the light comes on or where I'm connecting, you know, via camera or with people, it becomes so amazing. Yeah. It's like the energy comes, the focus comes, the gratitude comes. So I know I'm made to do what I'm doing. Yeah to communicate and, and be connected to people um, and edification mm -hmm. in that process. So what I say to you is you got to find something that makes you feel that way when that light comes on, meaning the work is still the work, gathering your clothes, doing this, preparing your whatevers and all that's, that's when you're like, Oh God, I don't want to do this. Uh, but when you're in the thing doing it, if you come alive, so what I'm saying to you is you're not going to love every aspect of your calling and what you're doing, but you do all of the cruddy stuff to get to the, the stuff that does give you the passion and energy. So leading up to it, I'm like, oh, God, I got to do the show. Do the... But when it happens, I'm so alive. Right. So that's how I keep my energy. It's not, I'm not manifesting this energy from this place of whatever. It, it is who I am. It comes naturally. So that's what you need to look for in your own life and in your own calling. Right. What's the thing that brings you that energy and just like, 
right. how can you do more of that, make that your thing? But I want to be clear, advice. Zach. Yeah. It's not going to be that way 100% of the time. Like so right. many people are like, I'm just tired. Well, like you're saying, it's, it's a job. It's a, right. there's. It's a job. Yeah. Yeah. So is there something that you tell yourself? Like on those days, just building off this question, like on those days, those mornings. Yeah, it's mornings, just commitment. You just, you just got to do just it. just commitment, babe. Yeah. It's consistency through commitment. That's yep. it. Yep. If you do something for 100 hours. For a year, for 365 days. So it's like 18 minutes a day. Okay. By the time the end of the year comes, hours. you will be better than 95% of the world doing it. So okay. it's it's not about oh, how much so you do. It's the consistency in which you do it that's with. That's not that much. That's it. Wow. Okay. Here's a good one, Kim. I'm 31, but I need your training and push. And then she wrote seven of the like laughing till you're crying emojis. <laughs> I love it. So, you know, what do you say to someone that needs, that feels like she needs your training, she needs your push? I think everybody needs a coach. Everybody needs training. Everybody needs to be encouraged and reminded of what they can do and who they are. Um, that's why I'm so, I'm such a proponent and such a, a fan of mentorship. Okay. And also, you know, I don't want to push classes and things on the internet, but they do do a good work. I mean, if you can afford it and you can invest in your personal development, I would say yes. And I don't personally coach like that anymore. I used to. Um, but we have a course coming out that can help you with that too. But iron sharpens iron. So, you know, I'm very um, strongly in, in favor of getting coaching. And I don't care how old you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, my mom is still growing and learning. I mean, she's still, she's still, I mean, she, she, she'll tell you the people she watches, Dr. Jeremiah. She, she, she's always trying to stimulate and grow and get better. Yeah. And so for you saying, yeah, you do need, if you, if you feel like you need to grow and, and step out in a personal way, find someone, find a book, find a, find some interactions, find a community of people that can, you can all do that together. Y'all, let me tell you something. When you stop growing, you're done. You're done. Yeah. You know, I say that about my friend Deion Sanders because it's so funny how, you know, he's like the hottest thing going right now. And I've known him for a long time and he's like a brother from another mother. But, you know, we don't even talk about his 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 NFL career, Hall of Famer career and, and winning two major, you know, World Series and, you know, Super Bowl. We don't even talk about those accomplishments anymore. He has grown. Right. Even from, you're thinking, how can you grow from that? Now he's, now he's like, one of the best coaches out there. I'm just telling you, like, growth is important, babe. Yep. And and so do what you've got to do to help your personal growth. Mm. It's important. And so I say, yes, you do, you do need a coach. You do need someone to push you and help you to get better and do it. We all do. Okay. So we have so many questions left, but we're running out of time. Um, I'm gonna do okay. rapid fire questions. For these ones, oh, okay? Oh, Lord, I love it. You ready? So these are all Kim right. rapid fire. Yeah. These are all from uh, folks still online. Did you have a favorite mom? Ah! Oh, yeah, I did. Um, Angie for um, her sassiness. Deb for her, hey, doll. She was so hilarious. She could always make me laugh. Lee, because she was so transparent. She would just be like, Kim, I don't know what to do. I mean, they all were f my favorites for different reasons. Yeah. Do you actually hate clogging? Yes. <laughs> and let, let me say, I don't hate it. That I hate, the, I just, I just, I don't hate it in the fact that it's not a valid, like, competition sport. I just don't think it should be a pageant talent. Okay. Um, this one I got to give credit to. N. Madania wrote, um, we all know you loathed clogging as a talent, um, but what right. talent in today's pageants would you say is as bad as clogging? A spoken word. Spoken word. And recently, you did a spoken I saw word somebody on the show, Kim. It's not my favorite, but I, but I just saw recently. I'll have to trump that. But spoken words is not my favorite. Um, I I just saw a girl play the cups. Okay, she played cups like red solo cups, and that's a stretch for me. And she won Miss America with it. Just saying, she played the cups on stage. The girl who won Miss America played the cups. Yeah, it was many years ago. It was a couple of years ago, okay. a few years back. But yeah, mm -hmm. all right. I just wouldn't be a fan of that. Okay, we got a ton of questions about Alexis. Uh, basically, they all boil oh, down to, was she really that much of a diva, her and her mom? Uh, yeah. 
Uh, but she wasn't, she wasn't rude. She wasn't rude. She, she was, I liked that kid. Tell you why I liked her. Um, she had some kahunas. Yeah, and see, did. let me tell you something. Now, she didn't have them bigger than me. Okay. <laughs> but she had them. And I, I like seeing that. I like seeing a young woman. We just had to get that molded a little bit. Yep. And her mom allowed it. Yeah. That was the problem. All that was true. Um, you know, you didn't see all the edits, so it looked amped up. Right. You know, by the time they right. cut the scene. Reality TV is always I, like I, a much bigger version it's of always the amped truth. Up. Yeah, totally. Right. But it wasn't, that was not a fake person. She's not fake with being that way, but you didn't see all the warm fuzzies in her too, right? Well, all of us, you know, crying together and doing, you know, do, you know, so you saw a, a edited version, but yeah, that she's a diva. But she, she, when we say diva, she was spoiled, but she wasn't, she was strong. And yeah. I liked that. About her. Did she really get the modeling contract? That was another question we got a lot. She did. Okay. She did. She got the modeling contract. And she actually, all those songs she wrote herself. I mean, she's, she was a talented young she woman. She was talented. Still is. Yeah, she is super talented. Um, okay. Uh, what was your favorite episode? Uh, it has to be one. Episode Addison. one. Addison. Okay. Addison. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. I'm going to take full credit for it, if I may. Um, <laughs> I went down and trained some girls in Valdalia, Georgia. And Angie, actually, she was in Angie's dance class. And I just trained her in an interview. And I thought, Lord, help. This child is gold. She's TV gold. And um, I came back and insisted they they look at her and cast her. Mm. And so it, it, I love all the girls, but I just thought Addison was... It was the first, it was the kickoff. You know, it was the first episode and it was one of my faves. Maddie Dalton 9 asked, was Addison's accent real? <laughs> uh, for sure, 100,000%. Go follow her on social media. She's still talking just like that. I was going to say, how do you fake that? Like, how do you get, a, you know, 11 year old or whatever to fake that? That would be next level. A Addison is a, Allison, Addison is a, a person who truly just is who she is. And you got to love that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, were there any pranks done on set? Oh my gosh. Yes. Tons. <laughs> Tons. Um, I'm a big prankster. So um, one time I threw all their clothes on the floor and said that we had been robbed. I mean, like I, I've all, I always try to do stuff that get people's reaction. Yeah. I'm a big prankster. So there was many, many pranks on set. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, couple more. What was the most shocking thing you learned about reality TV from being on it? It's a lot of hard work. Yeah. And I don't know if it's even worth it. I mean, without the message, I mean, it's not worth the money. And it's the mess. if the message wasn't there for me, I probably would never do that again. Yeah. It's hard work. It is. Um, whose transformation meant the most to you? Oh, God, there was so many. Adia. Oh, Adia was good. Alexis was one of my favorites. Yeah. Addison, of course. Yeah. Um, Gracie. A little soccer player, oh, um, in all for different reasons. You know, I, I loved uh, EJ, my little bookworm. She was so confident. I loved seeing that. I, I liked seeing the transformations where there weren't typical pageant girls. That's what but, I was going to say. Yeah, those but, were so special. Yeah. Like you took these girls that you would say would never, you know, didn't seem like they fit the mold, and yeah, but the mold is made to be broken. Yeah. Every mold out there is made to be broken. And I, I didn't fit the mold either. And so for me, that has always been um, my heart, is to see people really achieve at being themselves. So breaking the mold is, is boy, that don't challenge me, because I love the challenge. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, two more. Was the drama with Victoria Harris real? No. Okay. <laughs> I will tell you, um, it was with Allison because Allison's a very competitive person. Yep. I am too, but you got to have competition to begin with. I can't, you know, it's got to be a fair fight for me to be real competitive with another person. But um, Victoria's an amazing young woman and she was a great coach herself. Um, Allison was all in with it. And Victoria was all in with it. But at the end of the day, you know, you have to compete with yourself. So for me, um, it was not real for me. Yeah. I was like, this is not even a fair fight. But it's fun. It was fun for the show. And it worked. But I liked her as a person. Yeah. I loved her as a person. Like, I didn't, I mean, she was a little shady. <laughs> Tricky Vicky. They called her Tricky, Tricky Vicky. Vicky. She was a little shady. <laughs> um, but Allison was too. So I let Allison deal with that because I'm like, 
babe, I done been there and well, done this, got the crown, bought the t-shirt, you know? And when we were shooting the behind the scenes stuff, like, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Allison was like getting, her feathers were getting <laughs> oh, she ruffled. Gets, she was watching those scenes and oh, yeah. she was yeah, like yeah, yeah. getting hot. And I was yeah. like, okay, we're, this is happening. Like, what's going to happen? Well, let me just tell you something. If you come for my girls, you know, <laughs> what I say, you mess with the bull, you're going to get the horns. You know yep, what I'm saying? Yep. Like, that's how I feel. Don't mess with the bull. Then you ain't going to have to get, you know, mess, you don't have to get the horns. That's how I say, like with Tr Vicky, I was like, all right, little girl, I'm older and bigger than you. Okay. My daddy always used to say, the bigger the butt cheeks, the sweeter the meat. That's right. <laughs> I'm sweet until I'm not. <laughs> Sorry. Just, I love these so much. Okay. Last one. And we're going to go deep a little bit with this one. Um, that okay. Emily girl 22 wrote, what called you to do the show? I'm so glad you made the show, of course, but inner motivation. I want to see every woman. I say this all the time. I'm a girl's girl. I love the dudes too. I have three men I live with, okay? But let's just set them aside, okay? I want to see every woman. I don't care her age, her status, her race, her anything. I don't care about any of that. Rise to their full potential. And you know why? Because I had to fight to do that for myself. Yeah. I had a great mom and dad, very supportive. But even my own mother said, you don't ever win Miss Georgia with that short hair. Because everything in life conspires to get you to not believe in you. And look, I'm no savior. I know the savior, but I'm not a savior. And I'm not a perfect person. And I fought tooth and nail to have this show remain to the integrity of what the intent was. Yeah. And it was to see every young girl when she's looking at that or watching the show and every mama, every, every woman looking at that going, you know what? I'm beautiful just as I am. Could I be better? Can I work a little harder? Will I ever want a pageant? Maybe, yes, no, whatever. But I can be the best me I can be. And, and I can believe in what God created me to be. And that was my motivation. And you know what? I'm going to say to everybody right now, because the show is now airing on QVC+, Plus, Kim of Queens, and then stay tuned for Behind the Queens at the end of the show. I'm going to say this. Yeah. I'm going to toot my own horn, toot toot. And we did our job. Yeah. Because the show is still here, and it's still motivating, and it's still encouraging people today. So you know what? Toot toot. We're going to transform you. <laughs> You're going to be a Glamazon for what's over with. <laughs> right. If you haven't watched the show, really, give it a try. I think if you listen to this give podcast, you're you're going to love it. I know I loved working on it and meeting you, and now we're here, and it's led to so many great now things. We're here. And it's just, it's amazing, because like you said, it was like this platform that launched so many other things. It did, and it's also it's also timeless. And and let me just tell you, for all of you watching this, and as you go over, say, I'm going to look at this Kim McCoy and see what it's all about. Keep in mind that you're fearfully and wonderfully made, there's only one of you in the world. God doesn't make any junk, and it doesn't matter where you've been or even where you're going. You can live the best possible confident life that you want to. All you got to do is take that first step. And maybe you watching Kim Queens will inspire you to do just that. There you go. All right. And... And... and you'll learn a few Southern sayings along the way. You will. Um, yeah. Like... This one. It don't matter if you've got a perfect body or a perfect face, and you've got your lips all glossed up. If something smart ain't coming through them, you hang it up. Amen. Amen. Done. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye, everybody. Enjoy uh, watching Kim of Queens. And Behind the Queens. Don't forget that one. There you go. Kim, you're really lucky that I didn't have to use this sound effect. <sighs> Boring. <laughs> I think I'm going to leave that one on the board. So like, we're like interviewing a guest and just, then it's your voice. So just, it'll just be like, they're talking and you'll just be like, uh, boring. And just That's it. Bye y'all. We got to <laughs> leave it right there. Right there. Bye. Well, you we might have to cut some out. What was in your mouth? This is some, <laughs> this is lipstick. This is, oh. It came off my lipstick. I'm just trying to put a little bit of Like, did you just spit out a tooth? Okay. Is that this is this is behind the scenes? This is how you know yeah. 
the glamorous behind this the This is lipstick life. that fell off of my lipstick, and I thought, well, I'm not gonna let this go to waste. I'm gonna put a little lipstick on. There's a 100% chance uh, this clip is going on the internet. <laughs>